Thanks for downloading the Swearing In Podcast, where you'll hear the origin stories of those who chose to serve. So ground your gear, take a seat, and listen up. The Swearing In Podcast starts right now. Hello, America, and welcome to the Swearing In Podcast. I'm your host, Marty Smith. Today's episode is going to be a little different. I'm joined by both Senior Master Sergeant Retired Scott Westfall from Episode 2 and Senior Master Sergeant Retired Jake Wall from Episode 5, and we tell some R-rated stories that did not make it into their initial interviews. So sit back, have a laugh, and try not to be offended as we share some experiences that truly connect military members together. So there's your pre-brief. Now let's get to work. I'm sitting here with retired senior master sergeant Jake Wall. Jake, thanks for thanks for coming into the studio today. Yeah, Marty, anytime, man. <laughs> you look good. Thanks. <laughs> and Dr. Jake Waller, astrophysicist, all the way from Caltech. Thanks for coming <laughs> on the show. Caltech. <laughs> and of course, why is it going to be California? Come on, man. That. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, why can't it be yeah. Oregon State? Because or Oregon Tech, no. it, it was Caltech. There's no or tech. Or tech. <laughs> <laughs> and joining me today is Scott Westfall. So we're going to do a Esquire. retired senior master sergeant story time. Jake, tell Scott. <laughs> tell Scott about your airman uh, who was so love stricken. <laughs> oh, God. So when I got this kid, wait, 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 let me set this up. Let me set this up. So what was he? What was he? A1C? Yeah. I think it was A1C, right? Yeah. When you had him? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Uh, well, I, I, I'll, I'll set some, I'll set some of it up so you don't have to tell the whole thing. So Scott, Jake was this guy's supervisor, right? And this was back when we were E5s, right? And, yeah. uh, so they gave him this guy. And maybe we shouldn't say his name. Maybe we'll try to leave his name out. Maybe Are I can use break the streak. So this guy, uh, when he turned 21, we all took him out to like shotgun Willie's and he would fucking ape shit. It was like the first time he'd ever seen a naked woman. And then he went back continuously like every week and was spending all his money there and was and he would come back and claim how he got all these fucking numbers. <laughs> he got strippers numbers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How much did that one cost you? Hundred bucks. Uh, but he found this. This I don't. She wasn't a green card, right? Was she illegal? That that Mexican girl that he dated. Oh yeah. So yeah. So when I got this kid, he was just fresh off a of divorce, and oh, he found out that divorce. she was whoring around on him. Hmm. While he was on the chow run, hmm. so he goes on the, this precious. <laughs> this is the guy. So his his wife. This is when I inherited this kid. He had already threatened to commit to suicide twice, and he his wife had been whoring around on him. He looked through the window while he was on a chow run because he saw like a car in his driveway or something, or is it an apartment spot? He then says, oh, she's not whoring around. They got into bed together with their panties on, so they're good. <laughs> what the f- Right. And then, and then <clears throat> he goes and he moves out, but he's still paying rent on his apartment. So he's an A1C, so he's sleeping on other friends' couches for like months. And they finally forced him to get a, basically forced him to get a divorce and kick her out. And that's, and at this point in time, I come in to the picture. So this guy finally gets divorced. He's a very delicate flower. Finally gets divorced. And he's not threatening or, or just throwing it out there casually that he's going to kill himself. He's going, he's doing good. He's got a girlfriend. Fine. And one day we're sitting on that ops floor where it's, it's normally secret, but it goes up to TS. He was dating this girl who was 
18? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she's she was 18, and I didn't know anything other than Alleg- than really that, though. Like, oh, she was young. But she was smoking hot. I saw her. Yeah, she was oh, She was very oh, attractive lady. Yeah, Gosh, she was good, good looking. Hot. Oh. Yeah. And so we knew <laughs> had a hot girlfriend, and he was happy, and he wasn't doing anything crazy. But so wait, you're, 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 don't miss that part where his, her <laughs> dad threatened to shoot him. I forgot that because <laughs> she was she was a green she was a green card or something like that. And he wanted to he wanted to marry her and all this stuff. And his, her dad was like, "Get out of here! I shoot you!" Or some shit like that. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah. So he had that going so for it. There's, there's always fun stuff with this kid. <laughs> but that's but that's he was so dedicated to her. That's what led him, yeah. right? Because he wanted, yeah. and, and she broke it off with him. I think. Yeah. So basically, because of her dad. Yeah. Yeah. And like, hey, and then this, put him this, right, put him right, right back here, into this. Ain't worth a green card. I promise. And put him right <laughs> back into despair. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he, I'm sitting there on on console and and the other. Staff sergeant comes walking over and he's like, "Hey, man, your your boy's messing around in his pocket, his lower pocket." His back when we're in flight suits. We're in flight suits, and I'm like, "What's going on?" He goes, "I think he's texting." <laughs> so I'm like, "Okay, whatever." And he goes and sits down, and then as soon as I stand up, Precious pulls his damn hand out of his pocket and just starts moving like the console, like you know when you walk in the room on one of your kids and they're like, oh, shit. <laughs> and they don't know, like, I really fucking need to sharpen his pencil or something like that. You know, they just default to whatever they were doing. Oh, crap. Yeah. So he's just <laughs> taking around on the console. And I'm like, hey, man. And I walk over and I pull his pocket open, which nowadays is probably some sort of violation oh, of rights. A, that's an assault. Yeah. yeah. And there's his phone open, and there's texts, you know, on it. Recent, recent texts. <laughs> well, it was still lit, was text lit up, phone. right? No, no, no. I mean, like within the last thirty seconds. <laughs> oh yeah. And I'm like, well, it's a skiff. And he's got yeah. I don't understand skiff. the skiff part. Of it. Can you guys like? No. I need some help. <laughs> You're not allowed to have any of that stuff. I need. And help. you damn well know that. I'm like. You get your ass in the hallway right now at fucking parade rest. I'm not dealing with this shit now. And so I turn around to the commander. I'm like, hey, I just caught with a phone in his pocket, and I'm taking care of it right now. And I go and freaking turn the phone in, take care of, like, leave there, walk back in, contact security. And it's after hours, right? So it's at the end of a swing oh, going yeah. on to a right. mid. Which means you're going to have a long night. Oh, no. It's at the end of a mid going on to a day. Oh. Sorry. So I had just gotten off a mid. And meanwhile, it's like, I totally messed up. I'm so sorry. I'm like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> Turns out, right, his foreign national citizenship girlfriend <laughs> is the one he's texting off from the ops floor. And the commander's like... This brand new commander, well, we're taking his clearance, but we're going to keep him in. What, and this is taking months to kick this kid out, and he's yeah. not doing anything at all. And he's just just killing us with this stuff. And so, either way, he, he never actually kicked this kid out. Oh, he didn't? No, he never did. The only, the only reason <laughs> got kicked out is I... Denied his career retention. CJR. Smart. CJR. Yeah. And he didn't have a clearance, so he couldn't have any job at all. <laughs> yeah. So they, and like, right. by default, they just kicked him out. But the commander didn't do anything at all with oh, this kid. Oh, man. He put him over there in the dorms, and he was just trash talking me. Who was, a, who was a first sergeant at that time? It was not nettles. That's what a hook I'll tell you it was. War? Nettles would have lit people on fire. 
Yeah, right. But and he then handed like, him a condom afterwards. <laughs> 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 he was one of those guys that walked around with a tissue box, but it was full <laughs> of rubbers. And he would walk around <laughs> at the end of, like, the first sergeant, Nettles. <laughs> No, I didn't. Oh, man. He would walk around with an empty tissue box full of rubbers and be like, have a good weekend, have a good weekend, have a good weekend. Uh, like, fucking hey. That's yeah. hey, it's smart. I mean, actually, if you think about it, yeah. you know, you don't have to, yeah. you don't have to give the, uh, the stupid little speech. It's just like, here, take this. Don't knock it. Yeah, yeah. There was no briefing. It's probably yeah. racist. <laughs> <laughs> Please do not procreate. <laughs> The so he got the precious got kicked out, and then the other four of mine, <laughs> brand new airmen, two got kicked out, one got arrested, oh, one shit. got denied his CJR, and then um, he got uh, he just separated. Really? Yep. Yeah. So he, one of one out of five ain't bad. Oh, that's a hell of a mentorship program you got going there, <laughs> Sergeant Wall. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. You got the you got the commander and the first sergeant. Like we really got to get rid of this guy. Hey, fucking put him under the wall. Wall will get yeah, rid of him. Exactly. Well, no, I told you about the other guy that had the financial problem, right? Who was that? No, no, I don't know that one. He he was one of my initial airmen, and then he got he had financial problems. So I sent him all the counseling, all that stuff. He was losing his clearance. Okay. So at that time, Gibson was the commander, and he's a big, like, Midwest, huge guy. I like Gibson. Yeah, I liked him a lot. But he didn't tolerate a lot of things. Oh, I didn't right? know that. No, I didn't know and that. And so so my troop is too, calls me up after I'm done with a swing shift and decides to tell me he's too fat to fit in his blues because he's getting his clearance <laughs> taken away. Tomorrow and now is just the appropriate time to tell me about this. And so I'm like, whatever. Iron your flight suit, polish your boots, get there 15 minutes early. Yeah. We're both in trouble for this. So he gets there like two minutes early and he looks just like normal. <laughs> he's got his, for some reason, they gave us all those leather jackets and everything. So he's got his leather jacket. And it's behind him, and I'm explaining how to go in and report and all that. Yeah. And and he, I go, let me hold your jacket, put your jacket down. And I go and I turn around, and he's about to knock on the door, and I caught his hand. I was like, don't you dare. <laughs> because he was, once again, too fat to fit in his flight suit also, and had bent over and blown the ass out of his flight <laughs> suit. <laughs> And so his fix action, which is fucking brilliant, is to staple it along the outside of the crack. And so there's blown out butt crack of flight suit and then silver damn staples. And I'm like, gosh, dang it. Sit down. I'm going to go. So I have to report in the commander. And I report in. That's a I'm telling him I can't. I can't let, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I tell him I can't, I can't let the kids see you. He's, this is what happened. And then Nettles at the time, which was a hardcore, had been a cop the whole time, right. had been right. first sergeant at cops. And then he got sent over to fucking space squadron, <laughs> which is like a horrible punishment. Absolutely. He goes, Oh, I got him. <laughs> Like, he was excited. He's, like, reliving his damn glory days <laughs> and just demolished this poor kid. Like, I've never felt more uncomfortable, still to this day, Yeah, than I had standing at parade rest next to that kid. And even so, though it wasn't directed at you, you still had to. Oh, <laughs> I was within two feet, and I was getting I some of the collateral heat. damage. Oh, man, I felt bad. I'm like, he's, like. He's talking trash about how his wife spends all his damn money and like just 
He's just grasping. Like, He's grasping. Oh, he is man. just destroying this kid. Like you can't can't control your woman. She just does nothing but spend oh, all your damn God. money. This is all her fault. And then this is your fault because you're a fucking pussy that you can't oh, like. Wow. And I'm oh, he's an old school cop. Like yeah, he destroyed this kid. Oh, and I'm just Jesus. sitting there going, damn, he is a screw up. But oh, I had no idea <laughs> that it was possible to save somebody's face. <laughs> <laughs> like, I wish there was someone you could turn to. Can you say that? Oh, you okay. can't say that. <laughs> no, you just had to yeah. take it back then. Yeah, yeah. It was horrible. I think the I think the worst. Uh, I mean, I've been chewed out many times, but the most embarrassing, terrible one uh, wasn't really a chew out at all. Um, oh yeah, and it was completely public over the radio. Oh. And I was a, I was a lieutenant, and I was a fire direction officer. And in in the field artillery, he had uh, eight guns, and he had two fire direction centers or FDCs. One would be hot, one would be cold. So you you could you could you know one would stay on for like twelve, and then the other one would stay on for twelve, so you can get some sleep and go back and forth. So all the fire missions come down through the FDC, and then the FDC computes the data and sends it out to the guns. Well, they were doing a they were doing a a, a morning um, series. And a series a series is a, a a target. You shoot uh, eight rounds on one. You know, you, you shoot whatever munitions they want, and then a minute later you shoot another one, and then a minute later you shoot another one. So it's, it's it was back in the Soviet days, designed so when the advance guard was coming, and you would have a target here, and then you would have a target five hundred meters. Uh, back when you know as they're advancing and then you'd have another target so you could systematically hit them so we were rehearsing doing series and i was so tired that and we were hot and i was so tired i, was, I told my nco i was like you got to take the rehearsal which and the rehearsal is where they tell you okay this target is at these coordinates and we want these munitions shot on it and then the next one and the next one oh yeah Give so, you lay down. so i was like i gotta go to sleep because I, I can barely keep my head up can you take the rehearsal and he's like yeah yeah sure no problem so uh, I wake up at like four and this, this series is supposed to be shot at like 530, somewhere, 536, something like that. So I kind of wake up, I, I get my bearings. And I was like, okay, what, what'd you, what data did you get from the rehearsal? And he gave it to me and I was still kind of groggy. You know, you get three, four hours of sleep and I was looking at it. And I was like, okay, first, first series, first target in a series is eight rounds of high explosive. Second target is one round of smoke. And then the third target is eight rounds of high explosive. I was like, oh, that's kind of weird. Uh, why they do the smoke? And he's like, I don't know. That's what that's just, they just told us to shoot that. I was like, okay. So if you ever are sitting on a overlook watching the impact area and you see three, three companies of artillery shoot eight, eight guns in each company. I mean, you can, you can see them all land and they should all land about the same time. And then they should shift. Uh, and they should all land it there, and they should shift, and they they should all land there. So it comes time. We start shooting. First first target goes off without a hitch. I send the coordinates down for the second one, and it's just one round of smoke. And I was like, oh, okay, that's what they wanted. So we shoot the second target, and then we go to the third target, and it's eight rounds of high explosive. Right? <clears throat> and so the battalion, the, the level up, the fire direction center, uh, after we had shot it down, we we're kind of like shaking. It was like, oh, hey, good job, gun line. You know, good job. And then he comes over the battalion net, right? Three companies uh, and everybody else, all the associated stuff. And he's like, hey, who shot the smoke? And I <laughs> stepped back and I was like, hey, we shot the smoke, right? And he's like, yes, sir, we shot the smoke. And I was like, hey, whatever my call sign was. He goes, yeah, we shot the smoke. And this guy goes, <laughs> all for, you know, for... 300 people to hear. He goes, I want you to put the handset down. I want you to go sit in the corner of your track until, <laughs> until I call you. Out. Yeah, I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> so I put it down. And I, I went and sat. And I sat there for two fucking hours. That sucker wouldn't call me back for two hours. And then he called me back on a, on a <laughs> private freak. And he's like, what were you doing? I was like, I don't know my NCO. He's like, you let your NCO, you didn't verify. And then it went oh, into man. the whole thing. But publicly, 
he told me to go sit in the corner of my track in front of everybody. And everybody who knows me will never forget that story. That's awesome. Go sit in the corner. Go sit in the corner. <laughs> all of, all, my whole track was all looking at me. The five guys were like, I was like, what should we do? And I was like, I, I guess go get cleaned up because we're not doing anything for a while. And clearly, I'm just sitting here. <laughs> yeah, that was the worst. That was the lowest I ever got. And he went, and he didn't raise his voice. That guy was so good; he could slice you up without raising his voice. Those, those are the worst ones. Yes. Oh my god! Come on, Scott. What was the worst one you had? The worst ass chewing you got. All right. So, so I can put these three stories. Want in me line. do that one? I'll do that. Yeah, do worst that one. Ass chewing I ever got. Um. Well, the there's there's the worst ass chewing that really was the worst, and then there's the guy I was most scared of, but there were two different stories. So I, the worst one was we were, uh, I had a student, I was an instructor on the, on the E4. I was in my fourth, no, it was my third year flying. And uh, I had a student and he was kind of an airhead. He's a good kid, but he was, um, he was a bit of an airhead and um, just, I don't know, a little light in the loafers. And he <laughs> was, was not required to, so as a student, if we were on alert, then the students were not required to travel with the aircraft. And so sometimes the students would travel with the aircraft. Like we had to have the alert crew by, by rule or whatever. And so this kid's name, it will go. So you were, you were like a line instructor, right? Yeah. 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 Like it wasn't a okay. school. It was, there was no school for what we did. It was just OJT. Yeah. And it was OJT yeah. for like 13 years. There was no school for what we did. And <laughs> so this kid lived nearby and we were at Offit and, Every time weather came in, we had to blast out. We had to leave. Like if weather was there, certain criteria, and the weather guy would say something, and and so we would leave. And um, I told him, "Don't come to the jet." I called him at his home. I'm like, "Hey, don't come to the jet. We're blasting out for weather. I'll see you in a couple of days." No problemo. Like I'll see you in a couple of days. This is your instructor speaking. Do not come to the jet. We are leaving in ten minutes. You will not make it. Please, do not come to the jet. We are leaving. One more time. You know, like I, I had, you had to do that with him because you're like, okay. So, uh, you know, we get <laughs> in, right? say it back to me, say it back to me. <laughs> I know, right. So the air stairs go up and we start to roll and there's this big cuff wump because the E4, you know, sitting 850,000 pounds sitting on its uh, tires, you know? Yeah. And so, uh, we start to roll and then all of a sudden the whole jet lurches forward. And I'm on headset, and all of a sudden I, I pop flight deck. I'm like, what the fuck's going on up? There? I didn't say anything, but like, you can listen to it. <laughs> and everybody's like, what the? F-? And the pilots are going, you know, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? And they're talking to the cops. And the cops are like, uh, we'll take care of it. And someone had walked in front of the jet as it was taxiing out of the Echo, uh, whatever, Echo 2 position, right? Oh, my goodness. Between the marshaller. <laughs> between the marshaller and the jet between them like there's oh the jet taxiing on engine power oh with his little suit how the hell did he get out then right and they just nobody saw him they're like oh so the marshaller oh is standing there doing his hand signals and some fuck walks in front of him <laughs> and he's just incredulous and then the cops like he didn't he stopped the jet and that's why the pilot was like oh my god the marshaller stopped the jet right so he stops the jet and so the cops get on. I'm listening to this whole thing, and the cops are like, "We'll take care of it." They stop. We hear the air stairs go down, and the cops are out there. And I'm in all in all the way in the back of the jet. I have no idea what's going on up there. But then, as we're sitting there, we're waiting and we're waiting and we're waiting and we're waiting and we're waiting. You still have no idea why. Right? And then I see him come down the hall, <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh my god!" And then, and then within half a breath, I'm like, oh, "I'm fucked." I'm like, "That's my kid." <laughs> So of course That's mine. He, he, no. sits, he sits in his fucking chair. He's buckled in. He's all grins. Made it, guys. You know, made it. <laughs> and, hey guys. And we get up in the air and we're climbing out and we're you know fucking getting ready to you know. And you have to you know it's ten thousand feet critical phases of flight. We have to stay buckled in ten thousand feet, right? And then they turn off the sign and whatever. Well. I get, I'm on, va, I'm on, I'm on, uh, I'm listening to the flight deck and I hear uh, the co-pilot say, aircraft is mine. Right. And, okay. like, what? <laughs> and then all of a sudden the commo pops on the other channel and he's like, SHF commo. I'm like, this is SHF. He goes hallway. So I go in the hallway 
and the the aircraft commander has my comm officer and me, not the student, out in the hallway, and we are tilted. Remember, we're climbing. We're we have not made ten thousand feet. We have oh, man. we have not even followed any of the rules. He, I have never had someone so close to my face. And this, we were good friends with the pilots. The pilots like loved us. We were we were cool kids, right? Oh my god! All the anger from this guy's childhood and his <laughs> children and his marriage all came out on me. And I don't even remember the damn that. third deployment. <laughs> it's the third, not making lieutenant colonel the first time. Everything came out at once. That girl that turned him down for prom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, Marty, just like you know, and Jake, just just like what you're saying. It was oh, yeah. first of all, it was it was aimed at me. Whether it was my fault or not is another story. But it was aimed at me, and it's I all I remember is the words, "Who's fucking dumbass, fucking stupid?" You know, but, <laughs> I mean, this guy had to stop the jet and hit the brakes and watch him walk in front of it. So I got screamed at, and the best part of it was I was trying to stay upright. I thought I was going to fall over because the the jet. Oh, because you're climbing. Was, we were climbing. Still climbing. We were climbing, and I'm like trying to oh, fall man. down the hallway. And if you're at attention, you split your feet. You're no longer at attention. So I'm like, well, do I stay at attention, or do I split my feet and not fall over? Because if I fall <laughs> over, it's kind of defeat the whole purpose of staying at attention. And he just, oh, you'll get in trouble for falling. He over. Screamed at us for a solid minute, and then just walked away. While the aircraft was anyway, I'll never forget that oh. forever. That <laughs> feeling of <gasps> you know. it's so hilarious. What goes through your head? At those times, you're thinking about just the goofiest, arbitrary things. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I remember I, I was at when I was at jump school, and you know we'd wake up at four thirty, and I thought I I thought I had uh, outsmarted the whole fucking system because I had a little electric razor, so I didn't have to go wait in that line with everyone to shave. But the problem was in Georgia in August, you know, you'd shave at four thirty. Couple hours later, you're back to beard again. You know, yeah. with, especially with that stupid little Remington battery powered shaver yeah. I had, right? So, I had lost my. Uh, I didn't get a combination lock. I got a key lock. So I had the key lock in those old stupid PT shorts they had, and I went out there and we did a PT test, and I and we came back and you do formation, and then you got like half an hour to go get shit shined and shaved and everything else, right? So I ran yeah. up. Polished. I ran up to my uh, wall locker and I was like, fuck, my key fell out. So I had to go kind of sneak back out uh, around the drill sergeants and stuff and run back to the uh, PT field. And I was like, I think I was doing sit ups right there. And lo and behold, my key was there. I was like, holy shit, that was, that was a crazy. blessing. So I'm trucking back. I was like, I, I'm going to get away with this. And the guy stopped me right before I get in the barracks and he's like, what are you doing, Airborne? What are you doing? And I was like, oh, my key fell out. I had to, and he's like, get down. And he starts, he starts fragging me, right? He, he starts doing push-ups, he's got sit-ups and all this stuff. And he and he looks at me and goes, Did you even shave this morning? I was like, Yes, I shaved. It was three hours ago, but I shaved. And he goes, I tell you what, go get your razor and come back to formation, and I'm gonna shave you. And I was like, Oh my oh. god. <laughs> Medieval. <laughs> Yeah. And here was the dumbest thought that all I had was, I've got an electric razor, he's gonna kill me. I got an electric razor, he's gonna kill me. I got an electric <laughs> razor, he's gonna kill me. That's, that was all I could think of. That was all I could think of. But there were so many people that he had forgotten about it and just oh, passed yeah, by, but uh, but not for another hour of me sweating this whole thing because I had an electric razor, he's gonna kill me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you think of the dumbest things when you're getting chewed out. Is this well, on that high note? Is this what you were talking about, Marty? <laughs> Amen. This was Marty, I'll whatever. give you a high note. <laughs> All right. All right. Give me a high note. The so me. as weapons loaders, we work in crews of three or four. And anybody that's not like any leftovers, they're spawned out to the to the squadron to do whatever the hell. Because we can't do our job outside of a one, two, and a three man. Right. So I'm I'm farmed out and this is Airman, I'm still in the dorms. First sergeant comes around and he goes, Wall, what are you doing? I go, Whatever you need me to do, sir. What do you need? Good one. You know, whatever. Like, I'm not, that's literally what I was doing at that point. He goes, Come with me. You're going to be my witness. 
I'm like, okay. So we go over to the dorms. He's knocking on this door. Evidently, this guy had a problem. This airman had a problem with waking up on time and looking pretty scruffy when he came to work. <laughs> so we finally, not, not first sergeant, knock, 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 nothing. Dorm manager pops the door open. First sergeant and I walk in. There, this kid is still in bed. He's literally got in. In his brown T-shirt, BDU pants or ABU pants or whatever, you know, at that time. And one sock and this stuff still bloused. And he's asleep on his bed, on top of his bed. And there's just like stuff everywhere. In his room? In his room. In his room, <laughs> on his bed, there's just like pants. Like he clearly he took one sock off and laid down on his bed and fell asleep. <laughs> Right. That's exactly what happened. So he, there's like pen caps and a freaking paper plate and shit on his <laughs> bed with him. It's blowing my mind. And the first sergeant just lights into him, like starts yelling at this kid, waking him up, yelling at him and going to town about how messy his room is and all this. And the whole time I'm just standing there and I'm like, is he not going to get to the point? <laughs> like, just get to the fucking point. Like, does he not see what's going on in front of us? <laughs> he finally just runs out of steam and he goes, and what the fuck is going on with all these damn guinea pig, guinea pigs? Guinea what? Pig. There was a dozen damn guinea pigs just roaming free <laughs> in this damn fuck? room, eating pizza crusts, eating this like little grunty noises everywhere. And I'm like, You're kidding me? I'm still no. I'm literally standing there. There's a dozen fucking guinea pigs just running wild in this damn room, and the first sergeant's chewing him out about how he's got one sock on and one off. And I'm like, what in the shit is going on? And and he is like, what the fuck is going on with all these damn guinea pigs? <laughs> the kid goes. Well, I got one. He goes, first of all, you're not allowed to have any fucking pets in the dorm. Yeah. And he goes, yeah, but that one was lonely. Oh. And so I got another one. <laughs> and so they had babies, and he didn't know what to fucking do with them. So he just let them out of the cage just to run around his room. And so. This was his dorm room? This is his dorm room. Oh my God. And so he's like. Get the fuck up, get dressed, put some clean damn clothes on, let's go into work. And he steps behind me and he opens up his wall locker, his closet. We had actual closets. And no lie, waist high oh. is a pile of dirty clothes. <laughs> and he starts pulling out stuff, like pulling out shirts and sniffing them and sniffing one sock because clearly the other one on his foot all night and all day was clean. And he's fucking sniffing one sock and then proceeds to put it on. And the first sergeant's face is just like, you gotta be joking me. Like, <laughs> you gotta, this is not real. <laughs> and so he's like, what are you doing? Like, these ones are kind of mostly clean. Yeah. And so we yeah. take the guy to the BX. We make him put on his boots and his blouse. We take him to the BX, make him buy new underwear, new socks, new shirt. Oh, my God. And take him back to his dorm room. And he's like, first sergeant's like, get your ass in there. Get a shower. Your hair looks like hell. And come back out. He walks in there, turns the shower on. And before the first sergeant and I have had a full conversation regarding the guinea pig situation. <laughs> the guinea pig. He's back out. He's fully clothed. Did you, did you, and he's like, are you fucking kidding me? You didn't even shower. Your hair's not even wet. And he's like, I showered. Didn't you hear the shower? <laughs> and I'm like, is this the damn Air Force? Like, this is what you were watching. This is what I then. signed up for. <laughs> you know, the beautiful thing is he's considered a veteran now. <laughs> oh, God. It's like the dirty dozen it, when they go in and they get they... out for failure to conform to standards. But oh god, bless. it just blew my damn mind. He made me 
after the fact, he goes, Wall, you stand in there in the bathroom and make sure he at least gets under the damn water. <laughs> you have to watch I, him? I had to make sure he got in the shower naked and the water was running. That's what I had, like, that's what I had to look at. And I'm like, dude, come on, man. Just here, here's some soap. Just fucking, this is awkward for all of us. See, somehow that depiction never makes it into the movies. No. Nowadays. <laughs> Nowadays it would be a romance scene. Oh yeah. Yeah, no kidding. Oh, well. Homophobic not to include it. Oh my god, that's it's great. Just like what the shit is going on? I'm just sitting there going, This is what I signed up for? Who was I talking to about the dirty dozen when they make him dry shave? Oh. And I'm like, nah, today it'll be like, nah, fuck it. Just let him have a beard. Who cares? Just let him have a beard. <laughs> it's fine. It doesn't matter. It's good. It's not ponytail long. Hey, we're just we're just happy you're here. Rainbow shoes. We're not even, yeah, exactly. We don't even care what uniform you're in. We're just yeah. we're happy you. Uh, you know, we retained you. <laughs> How do you feel about this? <laughs> uh, good. Yeah. All right. No, I mean, I. Oh shit. I, I mean, I love, <laughs> I, but I do love the army shit. You know, just the army is you know the guys that jump off the fucking. Travis is a medic, right? He runs medic. Uh, he runs a, a sick call for his company. Yeah. Right, and so. He uh, he talks about you know doing sick call and all the shit that people do, and the guy that broke his neck because a bunch of uh, E fours told him to jump off the balcony, so he did. You know, I mean, in the barracks, right in the barracks. And uh, sure. you know, I'm like that that Air Force would never even get to that level, you know, never. No, that's true. I mean, uh, I, uh, I remember in, in Schofield, uh, I had to oversee this case. Um, because these two girls who I think were 17 uh, and I think that's what really sparked it, but the, basically they were kind of runaways and they had come over to, they'd met some guys in, in our battalion um, and they were uh, hiding them. Right. And so they would, they would, they would sleep with them. And then during the day, uh, you know, for morning formation and stuff, they would like get in the wall locker. Uh, and then at night, then they would pass them. And these two girls will go sleep with like the next room and the next room and the next room. Oh my um, lord! That's and so amazing. they were doing this for <laughs> oh, ten days, two weeks, something like that. And then one of the guys, fucking VHS them, you know, the big camcorder, oh, no. right? And these two fucking that's not girls, easy to do. It's not like they had an iPhone. That's right, right. These two girls went to the commander of the unit and complained about getting filmed. Fucking these guys in the dorms. Not the actual everything else that led up to it. <laughs> no. Everything else. They were like, they filmed us without our consent. We want you to do something. And they're like, wait, wait, wait. What were you doing? I was like, well, for the last 10 days, we've been fucking everybody on the third floor. <laughs> like, we don't like being filmed. <laughs> yeah. And then the Air Force is like, um, they they left their desk without their CAC. What? <laughs> like, that's the best we got. That's why I like Army stories. It's so rough. We were badass, man. We used to walk around without cacks. <laughs> <laughs> we used to unblouse our pants. How dare you? Jake Wall, Scott Westfall, thank you for taking the time. That was been a blast. Well, as usual, yep. thanks for taking the time. Oh, that was that was yeah. a good time. Yeah, that was that always, was always fun. fun. Someday we'll have to indoctrinate someone else. And just sit back with the mute button on and let somebody else tell their stories. But in the meantime, it's yeah. been it's a it's a good time. <laughs> All right, Marty. It's good talking. It's gonna have the intro to you too. And then that. And that's gonna be the whole show. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we talked for two and a half hours. What happened to that? Time warp. <laughs> yep. All right, fellas. We'll talk to you later. Thanks, Mary. We'll catch you later. Bye. See ya. I'd like to thank Scott and Jake for making me laugh. I hope that it did the same for you. Make sure to catch the next episode as I sit down with former Army Specialist Jeff Breton. So until next time, on your feet, it's magic!